Variety Committee, let's come back. Sorry for the delay. With that, I believe we can go ahead and come back to order. Um, what we'll be doing this afternoon is we have a, a bill to hear for Assemblywoman Tolls, and then we're going to process some more bills, and then we are going to take up Assembly Bill 355 that was worked on yesterday and, and, and move forward from there. So with that, I'm going to ask Assemblywoman Tolls. I will go ahead and open up the hearing on Assembly Bill 225 and invite Assemblywoman Tolls to go to the presentation table and present her bill. And Assemblywoman Tolls, it's nothing personal, but I'm gonna have the turn the gavel over to Vice Chair because I have one other thing I need to do and I'll be right back. But it's not because it's your bill. Just want to tell you. Okay. All right. So with that, Vice Chair, you have the gavel. Thank you so much, Vice Chair, members of the esteemed Ways and Means Committee. For the record, my name is uh, Jill Tolls. I represent Assembly District 25, and I'm appreciating the fluidity of our uh, sessions right now since uh, I'm just grateful to have this bill before this committee. So Assembly Bill 225 um, essentially um, provides a pathway for willing and able um, Ed, future educators to enter the teaching workforce um, by providing um, alternative means of demonstrating competency for persons with disability or health-related needs um, that the Commission determines are necessary and appropriate. It did have a fiscal note initially, but with the amended language, um, NDE did remove that fiscal note, and um, so I would appreciate your support. Thank you. That was nice and short. Um, do you have an email or anything that says the updated fiscal note, the changes in the amounts? Yes, and I did submit that to the chair last week, um, a forward from the Department of Education, and I can resubmit it for the sake of the committee to, to confirm that NDE did confirm they've removed their fiscal note. That would be great. Members, any questions on Assembly Bill 225? All right, seeing none. We will go to testimony. <laughs> Those in support um, of Assembly Bill 225. Seeing no one here in the room, do we have anyone joining us virtually by Zoom or telephone who would like to provide testimony in support of Assembly Bill 225? BPS, by chance, do we have anyone joining us um, who wish to provide testimony in support of Assembly Bill 225? Do we have Pardon BPS? me, I forgot to unmute myself there. <laughs> <laughs> I was muted there. That was making it very hard for you to hear me. I apologize. It's okay. Anyone wishing to testify in support on AB 225, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Vice Chair, there is no one to testify in support at this time. Thank you so much. Do we have anyone here in the room who would like to provide testimony in opposition of Assembly Bill 225? Seeing no one come to the table, then we'll go to our virtual platform. Do we have anyone joining us by phone or Zoom who would like to provide testimony um, in opposition? If you would like to testify in opposition to AB 225, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. There is no one to testify in opposition at this time. Thank you so much. Do we have anyone here in the room that would like to provide testimony in the neutral position on Assembly Bill 225? 
seeing no one come to the table, do we have anyone joining us by um, Zoom or a telephone that would like to provide testimony in the neutral position on Assembly Bill 225? If you'd like to testify in neutral on AB 225, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. We have no one on the line to testify in neutral on AB 225. Thank you so much. Assemblywoman Tolls, do you have any parting words? Okay, with that, we will close the hearing for Assembly Bill 225, and I will turn the reins back over to Chair Carlton. Thank you very much. So with that, give me just a moment. So with that, committee members, I think we, can, we uh, need to go ahead and do a work session. So we do have some bills that we can work session. We'll do that towards the end. Um, so let's go to, we had a couple of assembly bills that were still outstanding. I believe Ms. Benitez Thompson's bill um, with Selena, with Ms. Torres. Yeah. I'm sorry for the first name. And the bill number on that one uh, 376. is 376. So let's go ahead and get 376 processed. Alrighty, give Ms. Kaufman a moment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Assembly Bill 376, as amended, creates the uh, Keep Nevada Working Task Force and prescribes its memberships. Provisions of the bill requires the task force to meet task force to meet quarterly and establish various administrative functions. Additionally, Assembly Bill 376 prescribes the duties of the task force, requires the submission of annual reports, and um, authorizes the acceptance of gifts, grants, donations, and um, uh, requires various state, local, and other entities to assist the task force under certain circumstances. In addition, Assembly Bill uh, 376 includes a general fund appropriation of $500,000 to the William S. Boyd School of Law of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas for the purposes of providing pro bono immigration uh, law services. All right, committee members, I believe we talked about this one just yesterday. So with that, are there any questions or comments on Assembly Bill 376? Not seeing any, we are working from a second reprint. So this would be in, in order to put the uh, am amendment and the appropriation into the bill, this would be an amend and do pass as amended. Am I correct, Ms. Kaufman? Oh, is the appropriation actually in the bill? That was what the second reprint was? They're all a little bit different, so. The 500000 has already been put in the bill, so then this would just be a due pass because there were no other proposed amendments. Is, is that correct? Okay. So I stand corrected, committee members. This is a second reprint. This would be a due pass on Assembly Bill 376. I accept a motion from Ms. Monroe Moreno, a second from Speaker Frierson. Any questions or comments on the motion? Um, Ms. Tolles. Thank you, Chair, and um, and this is an interesting one because I I, I do support supporting um, the, an appropriation to Boyd School of Law with helping processing these immigration claims. I just my my concern is more that um, with it being over in the Office of New Americans and and sort of the duplicativeness there. So I I'm going to be 
a no because well, I, uh, uh, Ms. So Holmes, maybe... I believe it was changed from the Office of New Americans. It's no longer in the Office of New Americans, is my understanding. Or, I, right, and I, I wanted oh. to keep it there because I thought it had uh -huh. more cohesion was was my concern um, instead of separating it out. But um, so so I'll be a, a no right now, but I'll maybe continue that conversation. Thank and, you. And I'll just share with you that we've had a n numerous conversations with the Office of New Americans and they're still getting their feet underneath them and we don't want to give them more than they can actually handle. So I believe the conversation with the sponsor and other folks is trying to make sure that we give them the appropriate amount of responsibilities over the next biennium to keep growing, but not we don't want to overwhelm them either. And that's why the conversation was to change it. Just want to have that on the record so for everyone to think about. Okay, I'm taking that motion back. Well, because I didn't, we didn't vote on it, so we don't need to work. So we're not going to, it's a due pass as amended. There's too many different motions. So with that, it would be a due pass as amended from Vice Chair Monroe Moreno, second from Speaker Frierson. Back to comments. Seeing no other comments, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Aye. I have uh, Dr. Titus, Mr. Hafen, Ms. Tolls. Are you a nay? You're a nay. Um, and Mr. Roberts is a nay. And that's it. Mr. Levitt, are you a nay? And a nay also. Okay. So with that, motion carries. Go ahead and send that one to the floor. This can go to the floor. So with that, uh, I believe, Mr. Watts, you're ready to move Assembly Bill 382. So with that, um, an amendment has been shared. Is that correct? All right. So we'll go ahead and have Ms. Kaufman walk us through that. Has it been uploaded? We want to verify that. We want to make sure folks. Hmm? If we need to wait for that to get uploaded, we have another bill that we can work on and we can come back to it if that would, uh, just don't know what the time frame is. Okay, uh, we'll get it uploaded in a moment. So Mr. Watts will come back to you and we'll keep moving on. I believe the next bill we need to consider is uh, Assembly Bill 427. We heard this bill last evening. Mr. Sever. With that, Ms. Kaufman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Assembly Bill 427 uh, revises various provisions relating to driving under the influence of alcohol or a prohibited uh, substance. Uh, with regards to the fiscal impact, the DMV uh, originally indicated that it would estimate it, uh, approximately 790 hours of internal programming that would be required uh, as a result of this. Uh, however, I do believe uh, that they had indicated that they can absorb the programming hours and so there would be no fiscal impact. Famous last words. Okay. So with that, committee members, are there any questions 
on Assembly Bill 427. There were no proposed amendments last night. Not seeing any questions or comments. So this would be a due pass as amended. That I'll take a motion from Ms. Hadegi, a second from Ms. Benitez Thompson. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, oops, I'm sorry. Dr. Titus, I apologize. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm gonna support this measure out of committee, but uh, and we'll let you know if we change after. Thank you. Okie dokie. So with that, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, passes unanimously of the members at this current time. There we go. So with that, um, do you think 382 is ready or do we go someplace else? Is it up? I just don't want, we want to do that as much. We can't do it for every bill, but when we can. I'm sorry. So I believe Mr. Watts's amendment has been uploaded to Nellis, so it is available. With that, we can proceed and process Assembly Bill 382. I can turn it over to Ms. Kaufman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Assembly Bill 382 provides for the licensing and regulation of student loan servicers by the Commission of Financial Institutions of the Division of Financial Institutions of the Department of Business and Industry, as well as the regulation of private education loan and private education lenders. Uh, the commissioner is authorized to conduct annual investigations and examinations relating to student uh, loan servicers and student loans to ensure compliance with the requirements outlined in the bill. And uh, Assembly Bill 382 imposes certain requirements on post-secondary education uh, institutions and revises the responsibilities of the Commission on Post-Secondary Education of the Department of Employment, Training, and Rehabilitation. Uh, there was a conceptual amendment that was provided and uh, it removes the additional regulation activities assigned to the Commission on Post-Secondary -Sec Education. Uh, the amendment is meant to supplant, not supplement, the amendment uh, submitted to the uh, Committee on Ways and Means on May 25th, 2021. It strikes or commission from Section 3 of Subsection 2B. It strikes uh, Section 53 subsection 5 and it strikes section 56 57 and 62 with that committee members are there any questions if there are mr. Watts is going to have to answer them seeing none with that the, we are working from the first reprint uh, and the fiscal issues have been addressed um, with throughout the conversation so I believe the appropriate motion for this bill would be an amend and do pass as amended. I'll accept a motion from Vice Chair Monroe Moreno, second from Ms. Bedinas Thompson. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those in opposition? Nay. I have Dr. Titus as a nay, Mr. Hafen as a nay, and that is all, motion carries. With that, um, if a floor statement is necessary, Mr. Watts, this one's all you. Okay. 
So with that, I believe that clears a lot of the deck for us at this moment. I would like to have the committee go ahead and consider Assembly Bill 355, which we heard last night. Affectionately known as my Charlie Brown Christmas tree bill. You can take that out of the record. So, Assembly Bill, hmm? Oh, well. So with that. So with that, we heard Assembly Bill 355 last evening, which is an allocation to the International Gaming Institute of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, for expanding the Leaderverse program. An amendment was proposed by former Mayor Jane jo Jan Jones Blackhurst to increase the amount from 500000 to 750000 uh, A matching grant is available to be able to match every single Dollar, and we heard last night about the work that they were doing. So the proposed amendment, that would be the first proposed amendment to the bill, would be to change the 500000 to 750000 The second proposed amendment was from the Nevada Blind Children's Foundation, requesting an appropriation of $1 million to uh, assist with the expenses of expanding pre and after school programs offered by the Nevada Blind Children's Foundation. That would be the second amendment. <coughs> the third amendment was uh, that will be considered is the conceptual amendment that was pr proposed by the Las Vegas Valley Water District, adding a new section appropriating from the state general fund $2 million to provide a grant of money to the Springs Preserve Foundation to be used to design and construct an ethno-botanical, man, I, I said it, ethno-botanical garden at the Las Vegas Springs Preserve to interpret plant life and crops used by prehistoric indigenous communities for agricultural, medicinal, and construction purposes. Those were the amendments that were discussed last night. The chair has another proposed amendment, which I would like the committee to consider. The person who wanted to present it last night was not available and is still not available. So the chair has agreed. This is a, a program that we have funded a couple of different times throughout our legislative sessions. It would appropriate from the state general fund to the Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health the sum of $2 million for research, clinical studies, operations, and educational programs at the center. It also would appropriate $542,343 in each year of the biennium for operations and educational programs uh, previously received through the center for the purposes of University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine so that they can continue their work and their partnership with the Lou Ruvo Brain Center. So with that, committee members, those would be the amendments. For that, and then the conversation was of Assembly Bill, Assembly Bill 447, which was the Nevada Center for uh, Civic Engagement, which was the We the People component, will be amended into it also, and that was $175,000 in each fiscal year. So typically, as I explained before we uh, went into committee, this is uh, how we, we normally do it, is we take one bill, we put all of them into one bill, and move them forward. I will say, unfortunately, at this time, we will not be able to include the Boys and Girls Club, but we also know that there are a lot of dollars in the Rescue Act out there that I believe the Boys and Girls Club will be able to access, and I have given my personal commitment to help them uh, work on that and move forward to get the funding that they need to continue their services as as we move forward we're trying to be very judicious with general fund dollars knowing that some programs need assistance before the rescue plan dollars will be available and we don't want to cause harm as we we move forward that's why we this list has been greatly pared back from the request that the committee has received and we have prioritized these services because we feel that they are the most significant impacts 
to families, children, first generation college students uh, moving forward. So that's has been the discussion uh, around this bill. I'll go to Dr. Titus. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and this is really for staff. What was, would be the total amount of dollars potentially if we include all of these and but not the Boys and Girls Club as stated? I think we're at 7.6. Yeah, well, I can do 15% off the top of my head, but huh. other than that, that's what the calculator is for. <laughs> Actually, it's 18% now. I just round up to 20. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dare them to tell me no. I apologize, Dr. Titus. I should have been prepared for that question. It's changed a couple of times. And, and I thank you, and I appreciate why she's doing that. I would say I appreciate um, how important all these uh, bills are or these um, requests are to the individual people that are requesting them. I appreciate that you held back the Boys and Girls Club. But with our um, previous vote on um, action stripping our rainy day fund because of, of holes that we need to fill, I just want to make sure that we know what this potential is um, before we vote on this. Thank you. You're very welcome. Ms. Kaufman. Madam Chair, the total amount is $7,184,686. So let me write that down because I know I'm going to be asked again. So $7,184,000? $7,184,000. $7,184,686. $686. And I'll just let the committee know that in the past, these two bills, one from the Senate and one from the Assembly, if you do any legislative history and go back and look at these bills, they were significantly larger at that time. So we really tried to focus on money on the ground for children, family, and college students. So that was the goal. Believe me, all the phone calls I've had to make this afternoon to tell people I'm sorry this year that we can't go there was not a fun thing, but we know where we are in this world and we also know where our priorities are. So with that committee member, um, Mr. Leiser's looking over his shoulder. It's 750, not 500. Yes. So that's what you had. Yes. Okay. We're just confirming. Good. Right. Okay. I've got two head nods. I'm moving forward. <laughs> so with that, committee members, are there any other questions on the proposal before you at this time? Not seeing any questions, the chair would accept a motion to amend and do pass Assembly Bill 355 with the aforementioned amendments. I have a motion from Vice Chair Monroe Moreno, second from Ms. Benitez Thompson. Questions or comments, Mr. Hafen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to go ahead and vote this out of committee today. Um, I have been talking to one of the amendment sponsors, um, trying to address one of my concerns. Um, but I do think there's a lot of worthy projects in here, so I will be voting this out today. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haven. Any other questions or comments at this time? Not seeing any. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those in opposition. Hearing no opposition, passes unanimously. The members present. Thank you, committee. This is, we have our big CIP bill, which is a jobs bill. This is our, our human services type bill that we try to do. So with that, we can go ahead and close the hearing on Assembly Bill 355. And committee members, you just heard uh, Ms. Toll's bill, AB 255, just a few moments ago. 225, why do I keep changing that? 225, I'll defer to Vice Chair Monroe Moreno. So with that, committee members, I would be happy to consider Assembly Bill 225 at this time. Are there any questions or comments? Are we working from a first reprint or the original bill? It's a first reprint. From the first reprint? So it would just be a due pass as amended? Yeah. 
I'll go to Ms. Kaufman to make sure that we're correct. And, and, and if there's any confusion, we can always do it when we come back to, to make sure that we're all on the same page. Madam Chair, that is correct. It's a due pass as a minute. Okay. So with that committee members and not hearing any other concerns at this time, the chair would accept a motion to do pass as amended AB 225. Uh, motion from Dr. Titus, a second from Ms. Benitez Thompson. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing no opposition passes unanimously of the members present. With that, I believe we have accomplished our mission for this moment in time, and we are supposed to be on the floor literally now, I believe. So with that, uh, committee members, we are waiting for the appropriations bill to be uh, reviewed in the Senate. And as soon as it is, we're going to come right back into this room. So please do not go far from the building. We are in recess. <laughs>